What's up everybody? My name is Kevin and welcome to the Center for Stingray Biology. In today's video, we're just going to do a tour of the facility. There's a lot of new followers out there and they never really got a formal tour of my facility. I don't think I even ever made a video of a formal tour. The only time I think there was something like that was when the king of DIY came to my facility, I think like three, it's been three years I think, or two and a half years, somewhere around there. But since then there's been a lot of new followers, so we are going to walk around the facility today and I'm going to show you what we do here. Okay. We breed freshwater stingrays for the aquarium trade. These are some of my breeders here. Here's our, here are some grow outs with uh, different types of pattern. We breed for a specific pattern to try to improve upon the looks of these rays. Here are some other breeders. That girl is pregnant right there. She's gonna be due quite soon. This is a black diamond male. And uh, there's a couple of other black diamonds down there. We can see through the, the floating cage here. I got this girl up here separated and she's been up here for a while. Yeah, there's another big mama. She's gonna give birth soon as well. Um, she's pregnant. You guys probably can't tell from this angle, but I can. So we got one, two, three pregnant females in there. And that is the only male, so that will be the father. In here, we got some more black diamonds. That's a P14 black diamond hybrid. Here's another black diamond. Very nice Thousand Island pattern. There have been some people that contacted me recently asking about Thousand Island. And for a lot of people out there who are new to stingrays, what it is is these are still black diamond stingrays and there's different variants, okay? And um, as a ray matures, their spot pattern changes. They can develop into rings, which is what we call eclipse. The spots can break up and scatter into smaller little spots. Um, I don't think there's a term for it in the hobby. Um, I just call them broken spots. And then there is Thousand Island pattern where little spots start to develop throughout the body of the fish, okay? So like somebody like that, when they were younger, didn't have any of those little spots. You see that guy right there with all those broken up spots? Now not everyone has it. You know, some guys develop the donut pattern like that, which would what we call Eclipse. And I have another one back there. So over here is my main system. Um, this is the first system that I set up. And this was pretty much the beginning of the Center for Stingray Biology. And slowly we expanded and added on these bigger acrylic tanks right here. In here, we have some Bosmanis. These are probably one of the newer species or one of the newest species to enter the stingray trade. They are quite aggressive when when it comes to eating and feeding. When, once they, they see me or they, or they think that I'm gonna feed, they start getting very alert and very active, very hyper. But of course, I don't have any food for them right now. This video is just for you guys. I'm not feeding them today, but you can see it, right? And this guy is my this guy is my Siamese tiger fish. He's been with me for a very long time. Um, even before I started this business as one of my personal pets, I've had for many, many years. I think this girl has got to be almost 20 inches, and she's really fat. We've nicknamed her the Fatnoid, and uh, I'm very proud to have her. Like I said, she's been with me for a really long time, even before I started this business here at the, Stinger, at the Center for Stingray Biology. Now, let's see, what do we got here? We got some grow out black diamonds, okay, for future breeding. We got a couple of younger Bosmanis right there, and more breeder black diamonds right here. So up here, I create these floating cages, you know, when I run out of space and I need somewhere to hold these fish. So here are also some grow outs. That one right there is definitely a keeper for future breeding. 
and we got younger guys right here these guys are all ready to go um, they're a couple of months old already eating very well fat healthy and active now in one of my previous videos not too long ago I showed this basket and um, a lot of people commented like hey what's that ray what's that ray and uh, let's go and talk about that ray for a little bit right now so it was this basket and it was these are uh, Bosmani pups and everyone was asking about that guy right there with the short tail they wanted to know what's up with him why is his tail like that what happened all right so basically the story for this little guy is when he was born one of the larger rays probably took a bite at it and damaged the tail and over the, the first couple of weeks um, the tail slowly rotted off and broke off to that little stub that you see right there but other than that it's a very healthy fish it's doing fine obviously it survived it's eating you see guys it's very active so it's quite unique and um, I don't know, I'm probably gonna keep it, or I was thinking about sending it over to Predatory Fins down in Boca Raton. I was gonna send this ray to him, along with another one that I have right here, which also, the same thing happened. This little guy lost its tail. You see, uh, a little bit shorter. I think this guy's a little bit cuter, because it actually pretty much has nothing there but that little point at the end, all right? but. He did mention to me that he had an idea of starting some kind of petting zoo of fish. We're just trying to find the right animals to put there. I mean, typically when you go to a public aquarium, they, they let you touch the starfish and other things like that. So we wanted to do something similar, but we needed to find the right animals to allow people to touch so that they wouldn't get hurt. And, you know, stingrays is pretty cool, but obviously stingrays, they have that stinger and nobody wants to get stung. But I'm trying to take advantage of the fact of what happened here and that since the tail is gone, the ray really is no longer dangerous to touch anymore. So we're going to grow these out and then I will send it over to Rodrigo. And if you guys want to know what a stingray feels like, you can go visit him and you will find out. For you guys who don't know who Rodrigo is, shame on you. He is the owner and founder of Predatory Fins in Boca Raton. And actually he is the one that inspired me to start my YouTube channel. So you guys need to thank him. You guys should actually go check out his channel. It's Predatory Fins and his website is PredatoryFins.com. Uh, and what we sell there are all different kinds of aquarium fish uh, with a focus on monster fish as well. And actually his, it's, his place is, is pretty cool. It's kind of like a public aquarium slash zoo. He's got some really huge tanks with huge displays, grow out monster fish there, and we sell a full range of tropical fish there. So you guys go check him out. What else we got here? Not much in this cage here. This is a girl that got a little bit abused by some other fish. So uh, she's up here in quarantine and uh, trying to get her back up to good health. All right. Well, let's see, what else do we got? Let's go down there. We got, you know, all the pups. So I showed you this side of the adults and we're gonna go in there um, to the smaller tanks where I can show you my pups, my grow outs and, and uh, other things. All right, so let's, let's go. So we're gonna enter this room right here and pardon the mess. Ever since this whole coronavirus thing, all the packages that I get, I don't open it right away. I tend to just leave it there because they say that the virus will only last between 24 to 48 hours. So whenever I get packages, I just leave it there and I don't touch it for a few days. So in this room, there are more grow outs here. And these are all part of uh, future breeding programs. Things that I keep where I think they have unique characteristics that I think people would be interested in, in uh, having when I breed something like this. So this is a, a quick little sneak peek into what's going on for future generations to come here at the Center for Stingray Biology. That's uh, some filtration right there for all you guys who, not, who are not familiar with this type of filtration. That's what we call a moving bed. It's plastic media suspended well, it's plastic media that floats 
and it's moved by an air stone turning the media and I believe I, I personally like I personally like this type of filtration it keeps my maintenance down um, because I don't have to actually clean the filter because it's constantly moving all the dirt is lifted up so in here is another room of smaller tanks of uh, pups so when they get too big for the basket what I do is I move it down I mean move it out and put it into tanks like this and for them to grow further sometimes rays stay here for a while and they grow and grow these guys actually got pretty big in this tank <laughs> they're all over 12 maybe they're like 12 to 14 inches and there's four of them in this tiny little tank let's see what do we got here we got some albino hybrids here we got some grow out albino pearls more bosmani pups right there and sorry about that guys we got cut off there for a second but i'm back so continuing with the tour um that was the babies over here i guess let me show you a little bit more we got some uh bosmanis over there we got some pearl rays over here along with uh albino pearls some albino pearls and uh some pretty cool hybrids over here but Let's move on into this room over here. We got uh, Marble Matoros and Marble Matoro hybrids in here. I'm quite proud of this guy right here. He's a future breeder, so he will be making some very extraordinary babies. And uh, let's see here, we got some P14 hybrids and we got some black hybrids here. Yeah, I know you guys wanna see this, so let me get closer here check it out pretty cool stuff and some more stunners down here all right so this is the stuff that we do here I've had people ask you know why do I breed these stingrays so basically we are captive breeding freshwater stingrays for the aquarium trade to help relieve demand on wild population so it's a nice little business in itself and it's helping to preserve the wild so for anyone out there who is interested in buying stingrays, don't hesitate to contact me. You can go to my website, stingraybiology.com. You can email me, stingraybiology at gmail.com. And also you can call or text, right? 310-674-3474. And if stingrays is not your cup of tea, but you're into other types of aquarium fish, well, you can also go to predatoryfins.com or you can email at livefish at predatoryfins.com. And of course, don't forget to check out his channel on YouTube as well. And if you like what we do here and you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. All right, so let's continue on here. I saved the best for last and this is a very exclusive, exclusive sting right here. This is the Albino Bosmani, the only one in the world. And it's just absolutely stunning. The color, the contrast, it's unlike any other albino ray that I know of out there. Ah. We're gonna wrap up this video now. And thank you guys for supporting my channel. Thank you for following. And if you haven't subscribed, please again subscribe and like and of course I want all you guys to stay safe out there the world is going through a crazy time right now and we all have to support each other right so I'm doing my part the best I can to share these videos with you guys to keep you guys entertained keep you guys indoors keep you guys safe at home all right so until next time I guess next time right